I feel for the other side. I really do. Can we trust the media? That's the media that has called for me and my staff to be assassinated, droned, rendered, and prosecuted for espionage, for our publications and for our involvement in the Snowden case. Even this year, the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post has pushed this junk. Noam Chomsky in The Common Good wrote that the smart way to keep people passive and obedient is to strictly limit the spectrum of acceptable opinion but to allow very lively debate within a narrow section of that spectrum. We live in a mediaocracy. What is politically possible is defined by the media environment. In Australia, Murdoch's News Corporation owns 60% of the mainstream media, one of the worst concentrations of media ownership in the world. I started WikiLeaks because I understood this reality, that the media frame defines the political possibility. So to bring about meaningful change, we have to enlarge the media frame. With WikiLeaks, we've had significant successes in achieving this in some areas, but more needs to be done. We have to improve the access and quality of information available to all Australians and to the world. That's why we have set up the WikiLeaks party and that's why I'm running this year for election to the Australian Senate. And that's why my colleague, human rights lawyer Kelly Tranter, here today, is also running for the Senate for the WikiLeaks party. The title of the debate makes the answer a foregone conclusion. I count many fine Australian journalists as friends, but we must look at the media with two eyes for its reality, not with one eye for its best. What do most estate agents, journalists, used car salesmen, drug pushers and people smugglers have in common? You can't trust them. Only a few are honest. It is the counterexamples that shine. Why? Joseph Stiglitz won the 2001 Nobel Prize for Economics. <coughs> for examining the economic effects of information asymmetry. Like when you start negotiating the wages, not knowing the wages of anyone else around you. Or when you haggle over the price of a used car or boat, but don't know whether, under the paint, it's just a rust bucket. Or when you pick up a newspaper and you read the front page. Readers, by definition, are ignorant. We read to quench our ignorance. Readers, in effect, are easy prey for newspapers and the people who own them. Newspapers have a knowledge advantage, an information asymmetry. They know what readers don't know yet but want to know. And so they can distort the news or even invent it. And you won't know until, say, Iraq is a wasteland with 100,000 dead or Tony Abbott is elected. Journalism is an asymmetric information market, just like used car sales or drugs. That is why its products are just as bad. It is a market where the bad drives out the good because readers can't really tell the bad from the good and it costs a lot more to do good journalism than it does to do bad. This is what in economics we call a market for lemons, as in, damn it, suck it in to buying a lemon. Just like some of the more interesting products you can buy from strangers here at Splendor in the Grass, what you ingest is often not what is advertised. But who cares about some shonky market? <clears throat> well, the media isn't just a shonky market. It's part of the most important thing in the world. Because the flow of knowledge is what creates the world. Every law, every regulation, every constitution, every human decision that we make, the construction of our entire society is built from what we believe. We can't be better than what we know as individuals, as a people, as a nation. We live in a mediocracy, and we will keep electing political lemons because only spin doctors survive in a market for lemons. But all that's changing. Why is it that I have 26% of the voting intention nationwide, but 40% of the voting intention of people under the age of 30? While WikiLeaks has made significant inroads into widening the frame for national security journalism, the single greatest contributor to our expanding horizons is you. You telling your friends what's up, what you saw, what you believe, and who's full of it. Contrasting what appears in the Australian press to itself and to the world. You form part 
of the largest bullshit detecting machine that the world has ever seen. That's why WikiLeaks has such support from people exposed to the internet. That's why we have such support from this generation, because you're better informed. This is the best educated generation in the history of the world. It's as if the used car market was suddenly faced with customers who weren't plebs, but trained mechanics. But we can do even better. We can use the political system to reform the media system so we can reform the political system even more. We can make every Australian part of that reform. Yeah, of course, you must all join the WikiLeaks party first and make us win. That goes without saying. Join the WikiLeaks party. Don't be shy. If we don't govern ourselves, someone else will, and as you know, they'll have bad taste. When elected, we will implement the following policies to make all Australians content creators and to substantially increase the funding to Australian journalism. One, we will oppose any attempts to privatise the ABC and SBS in part or in full. Tony Abbott denies this is on the coalition agenda, but as we all know, he answers to Rupert Murdoch. Two, we will push for measures to help non-profit media and non-profit news organisations. The print media still dominates the way political information is originated in Australia, even online. But with the exception of Sydney and Melbourne, no other large Australian city at present has more than a single daily newspaper. For a medium ranking democracy, Australia's 98% print media circulation being in the hands of just three corporations puts it into a special category of its own and not a good one. We badly need diversification of the Australian media. To assist this, we will make donations to independent Australian media organisations tax deductible. This was a measure introduced in the United States and there it helped to substantially increase the number of not-for-profit media organisations from Democracy Now! to ProPublica. Three, we will revolutionise Australian media and music innovation by establishing an Australian Content Innovation Fund, easily accessible to all Australians. A fund that bypasses the inefficient, politicised and bureaucratic traditional funding mechanisms. The model will be based upon the successful Australian Public Lending Rights Scheme, which grants Australian authors a small fee for every library book borrowed. We will massively expand this program so that it covers the internet, so it is accessible to all Australians across all formats and double the amount returned to Australian authors. We will do this by conducting a statistical survey throughout the year to determine the 100,000 most nominated works authored by Australians across music, journalism, online books, reference works, blogs, videos and other content. Each Australian making a list will be paid dividends from its budget in proportion to the frequency discovered by the survey over the last year, capped to a total of two times the medium wage per author. The money will come from a small fee on the defence budget because projecting popular Australian content to the world makes the world care about the fate of Australians and is a very effective contribution to our defence. We must have a strong defence and that means an efficient, clever and creative defence. The WikiLeaks party is serious about bringing hard-hitting scrutiny to Canberra and shaking up Australia's complacent party oligarchy. Please use your vote. Vote for the WikiLeaks party. Oh yeah, uh, and if you're wondering about this t-shirt, well, you've heard of Kevin Rudd talk about how he's going to put Australian asylum seekers into Papua New Guinea. Well, there's someone he should speak to first, and that person is the leader of the West Papuan resistance, Benny Wender. Benny Wender is a fellow Red Notice uh, victim if you like, for a red notice warrant, here with me, here in exile in London. 9,000 West Papuans are presently in Papua New Guinea. So before Kevin Rudd dumps Australian asylum seekers into West Papua, he ought to speak to Benny Wender about what it's like to be driven out by the Indonesians. Go Benny, and have a good splendid people.